we can continue with uh, code processing. So we've got two projects for Cortex M0 Plus and Cortex M M4. So I will just I can select this link with editor and then if I would switch from one main.c file to the other and the proper main.c file would be highlighted within the project explorer. Before we will start uh, with uh, code processing we need to do some modifications within the linker files and in fact the linker file for Cortex M0 Plus. Uh, by default if we are generating the project for both cores Cortex M0 uh, plus and Cortex M4, it, the memory uh, split is organized as following. If I double click on uh, Cortex M4, I can see that uh, the RAM and flash memory uh, areas are mm, taken from the beginning of those uh, those two components. We have half of this uh, total space uh, for Cortex M4 and half, the second half is for Cortex M0 plus. As uh, you can see now, so I double click on the Cortex M0 Plus, and you can see that the length of RAM and flash is exactly the same, but we are starting after the Cortex M4 uh, area. So what we need to do now uh, is to locate the stack for Cortex M0 Plus uh, a bit uh, below, because at the end of the RAM area, of total RAM area of uh, the device, so this would be within Cortex M0 Plus memory space, we will locate a shared buffer. Uh, in this example, we will use a shared buffer which would contain uh, 32 16 uh, bit components, uh, so in total it will use 64 uh, bytes, and we will use as well one byte uh, to uh, inform uh, Cortex M4 about the status of Cortex M0 Plus initialization. So in total, we would need 65 bytes uh, for those uh, shared components. This is why I need to decrease this uh, uh, stack. Uh, and address by 65 uh, bytes. I can save it and then we can continue with code uh, processing. We will start from Cortex M4, so I go to main.c file for Cortex M4. I can close my linker files, there is no need to modify anything within Cortex M4 linker file. Okay, so within Cortex M4 main.c file, I will start with some private includes as we will use the memset function and the memcopy function. I would need the string.h header file. So include Then we need to add some definitions. So for this, we've got this private defines section. Two first components uh, will be used as a flux uh, to inform us that uh, Cort Cortex M0 Plus has started its activities or not. And uh, the third one, this is the buffer size of the table, we will use uh, within uh, our shared buffer. So the next point uh, would be to declare some variables. So we've got this private variable section over here. So then the first point would be to declare our uh, shared buffer within the desired memory space. So it will be address last 64 bytes of RAM memory space of this microcontroller. And then just before this, uh, we would uh, declare the simple char variable next uh, component is receive flag which will be our temporary variable
and then our buffers. So the square is uh, it's a buffer which contains the square wave definition. So as you can see, it's a mix of maximum and minimum values of 12 bits in this case. But you can use, also, of course, bigger values. Okay, then there would be an important global variable which we will use to monitor, let's say, the, the first component from our shared buffer, and then the channel uh, ID. So it can be any value between zero and uh, the IPCC channel minus one. So it is uh, to activate the notifications coming from interprocessor communication controller. Uh, then uh, we would need to specify as well the transfer trigger, which would be the variable which would inform us that the button has been pressed and uh, new data came to the buffer and we need to copy it. So the, we will use this transfer trigger within our external interrupts and some global variable which would be used as index later on. Okay, so we can continue with uh, further components. So the next point is to declare the function which would be the callback uh, called uh, once the interpreter communication controller will arise the interrupt. So it is void type. This is up to us uh, how, to, how we will specify this callback. We need just to pass this name of the of the function to the IPCC controller once we activate uh, the notifications. Then we need to implement this callback function. For this, we'll use this. Just not to or, uh, we'll just use it to copy paste it below. We can use this user code for section. And within this, we will just set the flag to 1. OK, so we can continue. The next point would be to add some code or implement, in fact, uh, the callback for the in external interrupts. Uh, in case you are using previous exercise, exercises for dual core, you can reuse existing uh, callbacks. In case you are doing it from the scratch, uh, like me or at the moment, you can find um, the name of the callback within this interrupt file, so it.c. Uh, and here, if we go at the end of this file, we can see this IRQ handler uh, coming from external interrupts, xti. If I go to the definition of it, so uh, right and button on mouse click then open declaration we can see this week the definition of the the callback we'll just copy it to our main.c file for cortex m4 and we need to uh, implement this function so uh, within cortex m4 uh, we are using uh, external interrupt uh, from channel one because uh, we are monitoring pin pa1 so we need to check whether the signal is coming from our pin 1. And if yes, we will just uh, set this transfer trigger variable to 1. In your code you may face as well, uh, you can see the toggling of the LEDs of the pins which are controlling LEDs. Uh, those are not necessary for this exercise, so I would just uh, skip it. Then we can continue with uh, the main function. So I scroll up and at the beginning of this uh, of this uh, Cortex-M4 part, 
I would initialize this uh, CPU to init done uh, to CPU to not started. Let me just check whether this definition not status but started. we can continue <coughs> and then within the system init so in between the initialization of the peripherals we can perform uh, some memory memory copying so uh, I need to load the square wave data buffer to my uh, let's say as an initial one to user buffer so I would use memcopy function and then user buffer. This is the target one and square one. This is the source one and then the size. So I need to, to size, I will use the size of and I will multiply it by the size of the buffer, so number of the components. That's it. So this is, uh, let's say, initially co uh, copying the square wave to the user buffer. So at the beginning, once we run the code, uh, we will see the square wave on our uh, variable which we will monitor. And then what we need to do next, we need to activate notifications from our IPCC module. Uh, so I would use it in the following way. So I would call the function how IPCC activate notifications, then I need to specify the handler of IPCC, then the channel ID, then the direction. So this is predefined IPCC channel and the direction it will be Rx because Cortex and 4 will receive the data. And our function, the callback function, which will be called in case of this uh, interrupt occurrence, so it will be re receive callback. Of course, we don't need those arguments, we just need the name of the function, so I will delete the rest. Okay, and we need to check whether this the return value of this function is hello okay. If it's hello okay, it means that everything went correctly and we can continue with further code but if there was an error so it was not possible to activate the notifications so something was not okay with the configuration of enable and uh, live with the activation of the IPCC in general so we should land somewhere for recovery so I will use here the error handler then the next step would be the main while one loop. So before that we need to check whether our CPU to so Cortex M0 plus is already activated. I will use for this while loop it would be one line only. So I will just check CPU to init done CPU to started. So as soon as uh, the CPU to unit done will be equal to CPU to started, we can go further. The next point is uh, within this while one loop. In the while one loop, we we'll start from a simple uh, loop which would copy the content of the user buffer one by one to our my data global variable, which we will monitor. Uh, continuously and display its content uh, via single wire viewer. After this, we will perform further actions uh, related to uh, IPCC state. 
from let's say this coding the i has been already initialized at the beginning my data is equal to user buffer component and in case we reached the end we'll set i to zero so this is the the beginning then after this uh, we'll need to check uh, whether the receive flag has been set just to remind you receive flag is set within the ipcc callback so this receive a callback so once we receive the notification that ipcc uh, has sent something to us so this is an information for us that there was some change on the shared buffer so something new has been copied there and we need to take care of this data so in fact what we will do we will copy the content of shared buffer into our user buffer and then we will clear shared buffer so we'll send all zeros over there and at the end we will send the notification that the data has been received by us so it would be the information to our cortex m0 core that the data has been properly received and uh, there is a new update within this shared buffer okay so we will start from checking whether there was this receive flag set and if yes we will perform the mem copy so first would be the target buffer so our user buffer then source buffer so shared buffer then the number of the data so we are starting with starting with the size of that just to be sure that we've got the proper size so this, we know that the size of the each component is 16 bits and we will need to multiply it by number of the components over there next point would be to copy the to clear in fact uh, the shared buffer with zeros Then we need to inform our uh, Cortex M0 plus that the data has been properly received. So it will be HAL IPCC notify CPU and channel direction it would be RX so receive and then we need to check whether everything went correct correctly so we received HAL okay if it's not the case we need to land into the error handler in case everything went smoothly within this uh, if loop we need to clear the the flag receive flag so i need to set it clear it to zero yes then just after it we need to check whether there was no button press so i need to check this transfer trigger variable in case the button has been pressed I need to copy maybe I would just copy to the copy pasting so I need to copy the square once again square to our user buffer because on on the button button press coming from cortex m m4 we are restoring the original content of the user buffer which is the square wave and we need to clear the flag at the end and the last operation within this uh, while one loop of main.c file would be hull delay of one second just not to spam the terminal those are the all operations within Cortex M4. Now it is a time to do some coding within Cortex M0 Plus. But before this I would just save the changes. 
So I switch to Cortex M0 plus main.c file and we will start with includes. So again, as we are using memset and memcopy functions, I need to include the proper handler. Then I need, uh, let's say, project pro the private defines. Those would be exactly the same like for Cortex M4. This is why I would do some copy pasting between those two. So exactly the same si buffer sizes. We will use the share buffer. We need to specify exactly the same sizes. Uh, then the private variables. So concerning private variables, most of them would be exactly the same. So I would copy copy this part and change the, the main components. So we need shared buffer CPU to done because those are shared components, so we need this. We'll have here not receive but transmit flag. As we'll transmit data to the shared buffer. Then we will have user buffer as well. And instead of square, we'll have the sign buffer. I've got it predefined uh, already, so you can copy paste it from the materials as well, just not to retype it. So it is our sign buffer, which we would copy to the shared buffer, and then it will be displayed on the variable which is monitored within Cortex M4 code execution. And then we will not use my data because this is the variable which is monitored within Cortex M4 area. We will use as well the channel ID and transfer trigger as well. So we will keep those into within Cortex M0. Next point is a private function prototypes. So here we will have a transmit callback. So it will be exactly the same like receive callback within Cortex M4. So I would copy paste it, that declaration over here, but I will change the name. It will be not receive callback, but it will be transmit callback to define this function again within Cortex and within user code for ARIA like previously for Cortex M4. This time we will set transmit flag to one within this callback. Okay, the next step would be the external interrupt callback definition. So as we are doing it from scratch, so again, we can find its uh, definition of an uh, it.c file. It would be exactly the same like uh, for Cortex M4, so I would just copy part of this from Cortex M4 space. I would copy complete function and here we will have, in fact, two buttons uh, connected to PA0 and PC6, so channel 0 and channel 6. So it will be channel 0, and we need to check the second condition for channel 6. Of course, we can write it much simpler way, but um, uh, I'm giving, um, let's say, leaving the space for possible manipulation of the um, of the LEDs or changing the content, just to use the opportunity that we've got more buttons here. Um, okay, transfer trigger to one, so it will be exactly the same action. Okay, so 
this is it. Then the next step is over the main uh, function. So the beginning, uh, we will uh, clear the shared buffer. So we can use the code from Cortex M for this mem set. This one. And it can be done really at the beginning. Then the next uh, part is related to inform uh, Cortex M4 that uh, Cortex M0 Plus has been properly initialized. This is why we'll set this shared variable CPU to init done to CPU to started. So once this line would be executed, we will go further with an a Cortex M uh, for code execution. Okay, the next step would be activation of the notification from IPCC. So again, it would be if IPCC activate notifications, if IPCC channel ID and then direction would be PCC channel direction transmit this time and the callback name it will be transmit callback not the transmit flag but callback and of course we don't need the complete declaration over here just the name of the of the function and we need to check whether it was successfully executed so it was hell okay if there was not we need to land within the error handler function okay so this is it in terms of the initialization then within while one loop we need to check whether there was a button press which is triggering which is triggering the transfer of a sign buffer into the shared buffer. If it was the case, we need to copy our uh, sign buffer to the shared buffer. So I would copy paste this function from Cortex M4 to here, but I would share this instead of user buffer, I would put here shared buffer. And instead of shared buffer here, I will put sign. So the result of this function would be to copy the sign buffer into the shared buffer once we press the button within Cortex M0 plus area. Then the next step would be to send a notification over IPCC. So if HAL IPCC notify CPU and then the handler channel ID and the direction would be transmit this time and we need to check whether it was successfully executed or not. If not, we need to execute this error handler. If it was successfully executed, we need to clear this transfer trigger variable for the next interrupts from coming from the buttons. Okay, so this is uh, the first part. The second part is related to the transmit flag. So transmit flag would be set in case uh, we received a notification coming from our receiver. So in this case from Cortex M4. So in case Cortex M4 received the data, uh, you remember it receives the data, then it's clearing the shared buffer, and then it's sending the notification. So after this, we will land into the interrupt of IPCC, and our transmit flag would be set. This is the information for us that the system is ready, uh, the shared buffer has been used already, and we can upload the new data into the shared buffer. 
Okay, so we are checking transmit flag. If it is set, but in this case we are simplifying it. Those are all components related to Cortex M0 plus coding. So I would save it. And now we can build the code. Just to make it simple, I would combine those two projects. So I click on right button on mouse and go to properties, then project references, and I can select IPCC Cortex M4, apply and close. And now if I press this build, it will build automatically first Cortex M4, which is connected to our project. And then the next step, the Cortex M0 Plus will be built. OK, so now we are ready to configure a debug session. And after this, we will start a debug session and check whether the application is working correctly. Thank you for watching this video.